Hello and welcome to the Vibe View version 4.0 introduction video where we'll highlight some of the major changes and new additions that are here after our latest update. A key improvement in version 4.0 is how we distribute our license keys. Vibeview now has software-based license registration, which will enable you to use Vibeview on a registered machine without having to plug in a USB hardware key. If you have a USB hardware key and you wish to continue using it, you can send it back to MSI and we'll reprogram it for free. When you open Vibeview version 4.0 for the first time, you'll see a message saying your license is missing. Click yes on the prompt to be taken to the registration tab. Here you will see your machine ID, which is a code unique to your computer that you will send to the MSI team to verify and produce your license code or file. Once verified, MSI will send you your license code or file, which you can save to your machine or copy and paste into this field and then press register. You will instantly be registered and you can begin using Vibeview. Jumping right in, you'll first see the new Explorer tab, which allows you to quickly and easily navigate to your various Vibeview projects. On the bottom of the Explorer tab is the Cameras section, which will automatically populate with whatever cameras are connected to your computer. We'll double click on our standard color camera, and this will open up our camera and recording settings. Before we set up our recording and camera settings on the right, we can take a look at some of the video adjustment options on the left. Selected by default is the pointer icon that allows you to hover over areas in your image and get real-time pixel intensity readings, helping ensure you have good contrast in your image. Here we have buttons for zooming in and out, or you can simply use your mouse's scroll wheel. You can also rotate your image, turn on and off grid lines, and use the cropping tool. Next on the right, you'll see the new Quick, Advanced, and Details camera tabs. We're in Quick by default, so we can enter our max frequency, video duration, distance from our camera to target, and the focal length of our lens. We'll keep our recording mode as normal, but in Vibeview Pro, you also have the option for modal or averaging mode. When using a color camera, as we are in this case, we recommend using the RGB map color mode, which significantly reduces the file size of your recordings compared to the standard RGB mode. Now we can go to the advanced and details tabs to see more options. When using a color camera, we always recommend to go to the details tab and click the white auto balance button which quickly corrects the white balance of your image. In the Advanced tab, we see various additional settings to adjust if we'd like. In some cases, you may need to increase the gain to improve the contrast in your image. We always recommend adding more light sources when possible, but gain and other video adjustment options are here if you need them. If you wish to record multiple scenes or videos within the same project, Vibeview Pro users can go to Tools, Options, general options, and enable multi-scene projects and multi-video scenes. Finally, we have our new Auto Analyze feature, which detects one or multiple frequencies of interest and automatically processes and filters the videos right after recording. We'll set our max number of frequencies to two, name our project, and press record. Now we see our camera's recording, and Vibeview will automatically process and open our project once it's done. This is a great time-saving feature that lets Vibeview do most of the heavy lifting to quickly assess the motion and vibrations occurring in your scene. If you've used Vibeview previously, you'll definitely notice our brand new GUI or user interface, which has been completely overhauled and will make navigating and using Vibeview easier than ever. You can easily move any tab to a new location by clicking and dragging to undock it from its position and using the blue location indicator to snap it into place. We'll close our Explorer tab to make a bit more room. In our video window, we see that Vibeview automatically selected two regions of interest and filtered vibrations occurring at two different frequencies. In version 4.0, you can now add multiple analysis regions to simultaneously look at and analyze different areas of your video. We can add another analysis region by selecting this tool and highlighting the area in the video we're interested in, keeping in mind that we need defined edges and good contrast. You'll see our FFT chart automatically update with measurement data of our third region. 
We can quickly check measurements for displacement, velocity, and acceleration by clicking the measuring tool icon and scrolling to the bottom of the analysis tab. You can switch between regions or frequencies if you'd like, and you can also see horizontal, vertical, as well as absolute measurements. Before we dive deeper into the data in our charts, we can see that ViveView automatically processed filtered videos occurring at these frequencies. Under magnified videos, we can select one of the frequencies, then press play to view our motion magnified video. We can quickly adjust the level of magnification by using the magnification slider at the top of the video. The next new addition you'll see in version 4.0 are motion vector arrows, which can be toggled on or off with this button and give a clear visual representation of the direction and magnitude of the motion occurring in your video. Our new annotations tool allows you to add text, lines, and shapes, or draw freely on your video. These can also be toggled on and off. On the right side of our video, you'll see quick adjustment sliders for brightness, contrast, and playback speed to easily customize the look of your video. How your video is displayed in your preview is how it will look when you export it as an MP4. Now let's take a look at the chart below in our region spectra tab. This plots our measurement data of each region within our frequency range. We're set to displacement by default, but can switch to see velocity, acceleration, or intensity, and filter by vertical, horizontal, or absolute measurements. The spikes in this chart are typically the frequencies we want to pay attention to, and ViveView automatically selected and filtered these frequencies for us with the Auto Analyze feature. If we want to select another frequency in this plot, we can do so manually by using the Zoom tool to highlight the area of our peak then clicking the chart tool, which will automatically select the maximum frequency in the visible range. We can also use the pointer tool to select a specific area on our graph and use the left and right arrow keys to pinpoint the exact frequency. Then press enter to filter this frequency. Now we can see new motion magnified videos, which will show us the motion occurring at these frequencies. In this example, we can see that ViveView detected the fan's blade pass frequency at 57.6 Hz, as we can clearly see the rotation of the blades in our video. Conveniently, ViveView also detected and highlighted 19.1 Hz for us, which is the running speed of our fan. Thanks to motion magnification, we can clearly see the rocking mode of our fan at this frequency. Checking our measurements, ViveView detected 2.35 mils of horizontal displacement in one of our regions. Our standard ViveView camera has a detection threshold of 0.1 mil displacement peak to peak at a 10 foot field of view. We can show, hide, or delete our individual regions. We can add more regions or move our existing regions around by clicking and dragging them or resizing them all within our video preview. We can also rename our regions by double-clicking on the names and renaming them. We can do the same with the frequencies below. Once we're ready to export our videos and data to a shareable file format, we can look at the toolbar at the top of the Analysis tab. Here we see the options to export as an MP4 video, as well as generate reports in PowerPoint, PDF, or Excel file format. To export an MP4 video, click the Video Export button, which will open at the bottom of the Analysis tab. Make sure to select the frequency of the magnified video you wish to export. To customize and tailor the look of your video, be sure to select it in the Magnified Video list and then make any adjustments you'd like to the look of your video. Again, however your video is displayed in your Video Preview tab is how it will be when exported as an MP4 video. Once you're satisfied with the look of your video, you can enter the number of cycles and your preferred frame rate. Then press export to MP4, name your video, and press save. Now, if you'd like to export all of the data you've captured, as well as the magnified videos within your project with one click of a button, ViveView Pro users can export as a PowerPoint report. Click the export to PowerPoint button, and here you can adjust what you'd like to include in your report. Make sure you have the Filtered Videos button highlighted on if you'd like all the filtered and magnified videos included. You can even set your own custom PowerPoint template 
for your reports to be generated with. We'll press Create PPT, and ViveView will quickly create our PowerPoint report for us. These reports include all of our project data within easy-to-read lists, tables, and charts, as well as provide all our filtered and magnified videos in one convenient location. There is no easier or quicker way to consolidate all of your ViveView project data into one shareable and easily consumable report. There is so much more to unpack in ViveView version 4.0 software that we won't touch on today, but stay tuned for more short form tutorial videos coming in a future series which we will share on our YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and we hope you enjoy using your ViveView version 4.0 software.